Hello and welcome to Bohannon Guitars and Ukuleles. Um, this episode, or whatever you want to call it, I'm going to be talking about solid linings and how I make them from scratch, from strips of wood. Uh, so solid linings are unlike the linings that you normally see, which are the curved linings. And these curved linings you see go around like that. That's the kind of industry standard. The other sort is reverse curve linings. So the, the face is um, not curved. So the curved edge goes in glued to the side. And that looks a bit nicer than the normal curved linings, but these are still really bendy. So what I use now is two bits of uh, Honduran mahogany and I glue them together and then that creates a really nice stiff lining. And so me zoom in here. So this is the outer, this is the side, and then the middle lining is mahogany, and then the then the uh, the inner lining, which is a decorative lining, uh, is in this case bloodwood. And the importance of me telling you that is if you have a single width side, so just the outer layer, which is what the, I would say the industry strand is just a, a solid single bit of wood, and then a normal kerf lining, it's about eight mils deep from the outside here to the inside here. Eight mils in American weird numbering is about sort of a little bit under um, what is it? It's about five sixteenths. And a word to Americans metric system. So, uh, so with two linings and my three ply sides, that comes out at eight mil, or whatever I just said, fifteen sixteenths, which is the most ridiculous friggin' number I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm I'm pro metric. Um, so the I'm going to need that much wood and that is about 15 inches and so I've marked my just side of my bench here 15 inches there and there and also this is where the waist is and so this is this is not from the center line to the center line this is like from the edge of the block to the edge of the block um, and then so I'm going to bend these in front of you. So I just get two linings and then break them. So I'm just going to break these. So that's about. 15 and a half inches. So, just spritz a bit of water on here, which is my dedication to Pete Powell. Pete just released a really cool video. It goes for about an hour on wood and bending wood and stuff like that. It's good. I enjoy watching other luthiers.
videos. Um, okay, so I'm going to bend the waist first. Done. So the I should talk about my the widths that I'm using. These linings are about fifty thou thick, so it makes for pretty easy bending. Spritz of water. That's the upper about done. burn yourself like I just did. And there's a few different ways you can do this. So okay. so I've got uh, some fret nippers. These are my old pair. I think I bought off Greg Fryer, who made a instrument for Brian May from Queen. I used to work for Greg um, in Australia, in Sydney, Brookvale. So that's done. And this is the inner one, so if there's a bit of a gap, it doesn't doesn't matter as much. Um, so this is needs a little bit more of a curve just right on the end there. Just a quick touch. Done. So this off So I'm not going to bother showing you the second one, but basically I do exactly the same thing with this one. Hey, yeah? Can we draw a hole through these? Yeah, later. I'm just doing a video. Okay. <laughs> that was my stepdaughter. Um, so I just bend this. The radius is a tiny bit different, but it just goes over there. And you, so the second one, you want the this to butt up nicely against here. If there's a little bit of a gap here, that doesn't matter because what I do is I get a bit of scrap about an inch and a half long, and you know. I clean it up a bit more than this, but then just say there's a gap here, and I do this even if there isn't a gap, but there's no need to be finicky down here. Uh, I glue a third bit on, butt it right up against there, then I fare this in with a chisel, and I can show you a finished version actually. So, I need a third hand. So 
So that is the final product. But there's another thing which is a little bit tricky and that is to round it over. Actually before that there's another step that I wanted to show you. I won't bother showing you gluing it in. Maybe I should screw it, I will. Okay, I'm going to quickly bend this second side. So when the linings are, you know, 50 thou thick, it all goes really quick. Um, my sides, the outer is about 70 thou, the inner is about 60 thou, and the veneer is, you know, a normal 20 thou thick veneer. But you just, it doesn't really matter, just whatever works. If I was doing, you know, a problematic wood, like, something stiff and hard to bend like African blackwood or something um, I'd take the outer down to about 60 55 just something to make it easy to bend and I wouldn't advise using um, your good fret clippers for this just because they'll Die. So there's two in there now. What I'm going to do is leave the first one in, take the second one out, bit of glue. And this is my roller. Another reference to Pete Howard's video. Pete uses a roller and gets a nice thin film, but I'm Australian and we use fingers. And the metric system, <laughs> which England of course does too. Um, all right. Wipe the excess glue on your pants because we're all friends here. Um, there's no real trick to this. So obviously I'm not gluing this to the side. I'm just gluing this for the second bit to the first bit. And you'll see why in a second. So you it's a weird one. This helps get a nice nice and tight fit. You just want to make sure that the this edge of the two pieces of linings are even, even-ish, <laughs> because we're going to be, there's one that I prepared earlier, and I will show you, 
what we do. Okay, there's a bit of a gap there now. So because you because I've squashed all this in really tight, the, the the real fit kind of reveals itself. And you can see there there's a little bit of a gap, but it doesn't matter because I am going to put that third little bit of wood over it. And that's gonna be fine. Just give this a quick look. See in there that it's nice and tight. That glue doesn't matter, you can just leave it there and you'll see why in a second. So this is one that I prepared earlier. So once that's dried, you can take these out and they are nice and stiff. I mean, so much stiffer than this crap. That's just pathetic. Um, so that's the bottom of it, and I'll mark that just because when you're doing like 10 of these at a time, it's really easy to get mixed up. Um, this is 10 and number four, so I'll write that on there as well, even though I don't really need to in this case because I'm going to be... Actually, you should do this on the inside so you don't bruise the face. But um, So this is, you know, coarse here and misaligned a bit there. So what I do, get a block plane, see that there. Take off the excess. That's good enough. And then once I've done that, then I won't show you this, but I take it out on my belt sander and then just just sand it flat, just as you would a any bit of wood. And it takes like you know holding there for five seconds on the belt sander and that's that bottom edge is flat so I've done that on this side already so you can you can see this is a lot smoother and there's no funny business going on here a little bit there but that won't matter because what we can do is put a radius on this now and this is the machine that I do that on it's just a Harbor Freight laminate trimmer and it works really well so this is going to get a little loud um, actually what I'll do I'll put my microphone in here
bit awkward to hold this as you can see I was trying not to rip my fingers off um, sometimes I use these just to hold them a bit more safely so So I clean these up with a bit of sandpaper. I won't go all the way with this, but um, you can understand what I'm doing, making it um, smoother. So you can see the nice round over there. Probably might be able to see it. I think it's a one eighth round over, I'm not sure. And so once I put that, and that, that's just going to fit straight back in absolutely beautifully. <coughs> and as you can see, the result is really nice. And there's not going to be any gaps here because it's already fitted. Um, because I glued, you know, I glued the one, the outside one to the first lining and then took it out. And so it's all, all nice, fits perfect. There's a, you know, as you can see here, it's just finger pressure to get it nice and tight. In my last video, which was about head blocks, I forgot to mention why I do birch, like best quality birch ply on the tail block. Um, so, you notice this one is mahogany tail block. That's just because I had some left over. Um, it's not, this isn't an essential thing, otherwise, every guitar and, you know, cello and violin would have a ply tail block. but this is obviously really really strong <coughs> it's actually a bit lighter than like a tail mahogany tail block maybe it's about the same maybe but if you get a pickup you drill a quarter a uh, half inch hole in this and uh, that will weaken that joint especially across here because the grain goes this way um so that's why i use a ply plywood block and then if I've got any side material left over from the actual sides of the instrument, I glue it here. So it's like a nice continual um, line. With this one, if I wanted to do that, I'd use the bloodwood or something like that. But it doesn't matter. Sometimes I dye it brown or black or whatever. It's just an aesthetics thing. No one sees it anyway. The other thing I forgot to specify on the last one was the grain orientation of the head blocks. So grain orientation, grain's going this way and the the um, the end grain is here and here. With the extensions, the grain's going this way and the end grain is here and here. And this is getting a tenon, some get dovetails if you're a dovetailing kind of person. And so you're going to lose, you know, a third of this. So some people ask if there's any adhesion issues with the end grain, and the answer is no. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention, before you, you know, shape these and, and glue them on, radius your sides. So I radiused my... Can probably see it in the end block or the head block. See the radius of the scratch marks here. That's from the radius dish. Uh, and so I did that for the back, which is at 15 foot, and the top, which is at 28 foot. I radius the entire top and then I flip the radius dish over and just flatten it from here to here and that that's really quick it's like five seconds of sanding and it's flat 
um, and there's no need to sand all this. Normally with the end block, sorry, with the head block, you have to make sure the sanding marks go all the way to the edge. But this is going to get cut back a little bit. So for the when you're sanding the top, you you can kind of disregard. I'm just kind of eyeballing this, but you can disregard say that much. And you can figure out a bit closer to the, the real position. If you go here, actually, I'll use a to make my demonstration more complete. So you probably can't see, but there's um, the transverse brace line is here. I can do that, and this is again rough. So. So I can cut that back to there, and that will still leave me yeah, a bit of extension there. Um, so I've almost lost track of which side this was. Okay, so you can tell. I mean. All the four sides should be the same, but I'd like to glue the one, the lining on to where it came from. And this is why I mark them because when they're just all sitting there and there's a whole bunch of them, they're really easy to lose track of. But that one came from there. The other thing I do, I sand this all to 220 and then I shellac it, including the the, especially the round over. So when the when you shellac that and glue it in, um, when the well the, the glue won't stain this wood as much. I mean glue doesn't stain wood, but it kind of you've got to sand or scrape it off, and it is a little annoying. Um, and when you shellac it, it uh, comes off a little easier uh, after it dries, or you can. It comes off easier if you deal with it when it's wet, just with a, a wet paintbrush with water. Um, I think that's all I can say. Um, actually, I've got to give a big shout out to, I think it was Taron Guitars in Scotland. Uh, he, I was doing these these linings and I was hand cutting these and I the result wasn't as nice as I'd liked so, so the top one is hand cut you won't be able to see this anyway but uh, he suggested gluing one to the other first letting it dry putting a round over on and then gluing it all so thank you very much for that you are a legend a Scottish legend and he makes fabulous guitars and bazookis and other contraband I'm sure uh, so I think I'll sign off um, one last thing another kind of tip and Pete Howard touched on this too laminate trimmers they're really good um, here's another jig that I have with Two, and that's for doing some tricky binding stuff uh, and I've got a whole bunch of other ones uh, they make for really good dedicated single-use jobs um, laminate trimmers aren't big enough really to cut mortise and tenons and stuff like that but just little roundovers like this and little you know binding jobs they're absolutely perfect so that is my tutorial on how I do solid linings. And again, this is mahogany, two ply with three ply sides um, for a total of eight millimeters, which was five sixteenths, I think, um, thickness, um, which is eight mil. Uh, and if you look at the so this is the same width as the binding, then the purfling, and then 
there's nothing. And so the, really the top is just, and the back, are just sitting on the ledge of this, which, you know, again, this is according to how thick all this is. Um, there are some Dion guitars in Canada, uh, and maybe Taron guitars too. Um, they do like quarter inch thick sides. I'm not sure about the final thickness, but they uh, they do one outer layer, the actual side, and then they do a full kerf, kerfed sort of lining so that the entire side is curved mahogany like this, like full depth, and then they put a inner skin over that, and that's an interesting way to do it. And I, most of those guys and girls, if there's any girls doing it, uh, then they don't use any linings. So, you know, I think uh, the stiffness will be similar to solid laminated sides. Um, I'm trying to think. I always forget like five points when I finish. <coughs> um, these buy about 30 more than you think you'll need and that's a good start <coughs> and then you'll need like 50 more after that. Um, Alright, that's it. Thank you very much and if you like this channel, luthier tips and stuff, just subscribe to this channel. That'd be fantastic. Thank you. Bye. See you next time. Bohan and Guitars.